Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today, I'll be going over how I got Thomas Wayne from Knight's Models tabletop ready. So first, let's talk about the primer. I used Standard Mechanicus Gray, because that was most of his bodysuit there. And for the colors, I used Vallejo's Glossy Black, Army Painter Matte Black, Necromancer Cloak, Ash Gray, and Citadel's Mechanicus Standard Gray. I also used some Army Painter Lava Orange, some Citadel Mephiston Red, some Iron Rack Skin, some Citadel Flight One Flesh, and Army Painter Barbarian Flesh, Citadel's Bugman's Glow, and Dryad Bark, Army Painter's Monster Brown, Army Painter Shining Silver and Hydra Turquoise, and the washes I used were Nuln Oil and Reichlin Flesh Shade. I recommend using a paint handle, and the base just fits on the Citadel's smallest uh, paint holder, so watch out for that. This base barely gets in there. All right, let's get started. To start, you see I've primed him standard Mechanicus Gray. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Army Painter Ash Gray and I'm going to warm myself up on the model. So I'm going to take some um, one of my beat up brushes and I'm just going to start messing around with the mausoleum here. And I'm just going to start roughing this in. Neatness doesn't matter at this point. Don't care if I'm hitting some of the... Uh, root systems or the ground just yet. We'll clean that up later. Now that the gray is on there, I'm going to take some Army Painter Monster Brown and I'm going to do the ground around the tomb. Now here I'm going to use a sharper brush uh, because I want to cut in tightly between the two. No. And we'll keep going on around the model like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Citadel's Dryad Bark, so really dark brown. And I am going to take my fine tip brush, and there's all these little roots climbing up it all around the little mausoleum. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to be neat on this one. Just start using the dryad bark to mark in now don't put too much paint on your brush. Now I finished up all the little vine work and there's a lot of it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some army Painter Shining Silver, and I'm going to get a little ring around his belt, the tang, and the pommel. And the reason for that is I would normally do these colors around it and do the silver, but it's such a fine rim. I know it's going to be better for me to paint it silver and then block in to fix up the areas I overfilled. So this will allow me to be messier with the silver than I'd normally be. You pour too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my extra extra fine brush, and I'm just going to make sure I put one thin coat. Make sure to get this pop. 
pommel. Now with that out of the way, I'm ready to take some Mephisto in Red. I'm going to take my fine brush. And let's mark out the areas I'm going to paint with that. I'm do the holster, the bat belt, all the little straps. I should note I'm doing the red now because I know I'm going to go over the lines and I'm going to hit the gray and the black. So to counter that, I'm just going to do the red and then I'll go over and do some touch up. Remember the grip of the sword. And then his little his little emblem there. And then his eyes. Now for his eyes, I'm gonna use my extra fine brush. Now with the red on, we're ready to move on to the black, and this will allow us to start cleaning up the little mistakes we made. So with the black, we'll be doing his boots, his gloves, naturally his cape and cowl, and then we have his little tights right here. Now doing this part we just put the red in so be really careful. Cape will be the easiest. Just some large acreage of a single color. Oh, and don't forget his bat logo. Oh, this will take a while. Got a lot of folds here. Now with the black on and the red on, I'm going to go around and do a touch up with some Mechanicus Standard Gray. Remember that's what I primed him in. So there's a couple spots where I overran Sometimes on purpose, sometimes not. Some parts I just slipped, or someone walked in behind me while I was painting and scared the heck out of me. I'll go around and find all the little spots I missed. Now that I have Batman here blocked out in a way that's good enough for government work. Let's take some Nolan oil, and this will be our liquid talent in a bottle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush I've beaten up in the past, I'm going to get the bristles nice and wet. I'm going to turn the model upside down, and I at least want to get this undercarriage here. This happens a lot of times if you just put it down and Hope that it'll run into place. You get these dry uh, bubbles. Now we just slop on liberal amounts of null oil everywhere. Didn't want to get it in the eyes. And we did it uh, there. What happens if, <coughs> with his little red eyes, um, the null oil will just black out all the red, which means we'd have to go in there again. Let's 
too worried about the sword blade. Ah, let's do the sword blade just for fun, see what it looks like. This isn't how I'm going to do it, but just a little experiment. See how the wash sticks to it. Alright. And once we get this all on, we are going to let this sucker dry for a while. Now I want to give his sword a magic glow. So I'm going to use Hydra Turquoise. Move my palette over here for a second, show you what I'm going to do. Don't need much paint for this. I'm just going to take a drop. And this is already pretty thin and runny. You can see right here. I'm going to wet my brush. And what I want is more of a uh, glaze. I'll just play around with the thickness there. Okay. So it should be thicker than a wash, thinner than a paint. Now you gotta let that dry for a while. Now I'm ready to start working on the only part of exposed skin we have. And what I want to do is I want to lighten up that patch. So I'm going to take some iron rack skin. Take my little brush. I'm wipe a lot of the paint off because I don't need much. And I'm going to hit the areas that are exposed. There we go. Now with that done, I'm going to take some Barbarian Flush from Army Painter. And just a tiny drop of that. And we'll put that over. Sorry. Alright, now that we got the flesh tone on the face, I'm going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade. And just with my brush, just a little swipe. There we go. But now that we have that done, I am going to turn back to Army Painters Ash Gray and we're going to do some slight highlighting. I don't want too much on my brush. So you'll see all this muscle tone to make that pop. You can pretend there's a light source coming down. I'm just going to... Okay, too runny, too runny. Not too much water in my brush. I want a little tackier. And this is kind of like working with the Pencil, just going to sketch out. Just rub off the extra I don't want there. This will help him pop when he's four feet away on the table. And make sure to get his thighs.
Then I'll probably go around his legs a little bit more, but an important part is Bruce Wayne's tombstone here. I'm just going to put some edging This will give a little bit more depth and contrast to the little mausoleum here. Now the brown I'm actually going to leave alone. I'm, I'm happy with how that came out. Alright, happy with that. Let me go back around, I'm gonna see how much color I want to add. So I finished with the highlights of the ash gray, and it actually appears brighter in the camera than what it really is because of the overhead lighting I have. The next step is I want to do some highlighting. I'm gonna use some Necromancer Cloak. Now this is, appears to be very similar in shade to Mechanicus Standard Gray, but as you can see here, it is just a touch darker, which is why I think it'll work well. So I've got it loaded into my brush, and I'm just going to take the side of my brush here. I'm just going to hit these raised edges. So here, let me show. Load up the brush with paint. And then it's all the way through the thistle. Oh, not thistle. I'm going to do the front part of the cloak. And then you can see on the gloves here, there's a little muscle tone. Just touch a bit of that. And get some of the boots. Make like little light streaks in there. The new bottle, so it's really thin. So a lot of a lot of colors doing what I want, not showing up too much. I want to make this subtle. Alright, now what I'm going to do, since I've got this kind of toned up to where I want it,
I still have some ash gray. So we're going to go to the ash gray. And what we're going to do is kind of just only the top parts here. So, little pieces. So I'm not going to do any of the folds on the inside. It's just going to be, this will be the strongest concentration of light. And if I ever get it on too much, what I can do is take my necromantic cloak and run it over the light gray. And that covers it up. Kind of, it's thin enough right now to be kind of like a glaze. So what you can do is just play around with how much gray you want on your Batman. And that's what I'm going to do. You can see on the box art they put a lot of it on. All right. Well, it's all downhill from here. So I've got some Bugman's Glow. This is kind of a reddish brown. And what I'm going to do with it is the red of his bat symbol, I want to show it's a different material than the straps and the utility belts. What I'm going to do is just take the hint of the color, the brown, and I'm going to edge just Edge a couple pieces here on the tops of the pouches. This will give it more faded, leathery look. Excellent. Now what I want to do is we've got a little gemstone right there in his belt. Made sure to point that out and put a barely noticeable silver trim. But I notice it. Now we'll use Evil Sun Scarlet. All right, now I want to show that the belt is a different material than the shiny gemstone for the bat symbol. So I'm probably going to leave the bat symbol alone, but I want some lava orange here from Army Painter. And I'm going to get my really tiny brush. What I'm going to do is, so I painted this red and I put, there's a wash on it. So where this light would be coming down along the top, I'm just going to put a little crescent. There. It's already popping out more. I'm going to let that dry. And next, I want to go back to my Shining Silver. And what we're going to do is we're going to highlight some of the sword again. So what I want to do, I want to just get the top of the pommel. And get that edge. Just do a little piece of that, and then we'll run it. I 
how to show like little light streaks coming down. The problem I have with this sword is that it is really gnarled from the casting process. So I'm going to hide that fact. side you can see that's where the defect is I'm trying to hide that For the final piece of highlighting, we are going to take some Flayed One Flush. This is a very pale skin color. It's normally used for corpses in the Games Workshop line. What I'm going to do is just hit some emphasis all around his face. Now we're ready for the final step. I'm going to call it a day on this model. I think it's just about typical top ready. So what I like to do is use some glossy black from Vallejo. And I am going to make a nice thick band around the bottom here. Just like glossy because it sets it apart. So I'm going to use my large dry brush. And I want to make a nice smooth finish. All right, now I've finished up that ring on the bottom, and I think Thomas Wayne is tabletop ready. There, very lovely model. Wish the sword hadn't been miscast, but it's somewhat salvaged. Well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and we'll see you next time.